So what am I going to do about my ant problem? Well, I'm going to stop looking at them like a problem and start looking at them like pets. They're looking for what all wildlife are looking for. Food, water, shelter, places to raise young, covered, hide. <laughs> They have a place to live someplace under my house, and I see the cracks are coming up. I could cock them. I could spray that cayenne pepper tea tree peppermint water spray there and make sure they don't come in. But you know what? I'm cool with these little dudes. Um, I've looked them up, and, and there's a bunch of species that look similar. And some of them are from Peru, so that would make them uh, non-native invasive, I guess, to this area. And some of these little black ants are native, so I'm not an etymologist. Uh, etymologist. I'm not an etnomologist, so I can't tell the difference, but I have some friends that might be able to. And I will ask them more. If you know, just by looking at these little black spots running around, you'd be a really good etymologist. Let me know. So, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to follow their trail. It smells like formic acid. I care. Like, that's what ants put off, some formic acid. Um, it's going to make me sneeze. Oh my gosh. If I sneeze, I will blow all these ants away. It would be like a tornado to them in their world, a hurricane, because they don't even really know I exist right now. It's kind of like, it's kind of like God. I kind of feel like God, like I'm, I'm here right in front of them, but they don't see me. Okay, I'm tripping a little bit too hard, huh? Anyways, so um, I'm going to follow their trail back. And I'm going to find out where they're coming out of my house. And I'm going to put some maple syrup there. And they seem to love maple syrup. It's real maple syrup, though. It's not the um, brown sugar water maple syrup. It's the real out the tree from Maine kind of maple syrup. And um, it's and, and that kind of maple syrup is kind of expensive. But you can feed a whole colony off like a tablespoon. So it's not like these ant pets um, are very expensive to take care of. So I can put a little splash. Like you can put a little wet napkin, piece of a wet napkin down. And that'll give them all water, a whole entire colony, and a little bit of maple syrup or a piece of meat if you eat meat or, I don't know, maybe tofu if you're a vegetarian or something. I don't know if the ants, I think the ants will eat some tofu. Would someone please experiment with that? Like put some tofu down and see if the ants will eat it. Maybe I'll do that. I'll do that. Anyways. And I'm going to feed them so they can come into the house just a little bit, just like a couple inches. They can eat the maple syrup and tofu. <laughs> and then they could go back to their house. So, um, well... I guess just go back to their room since we're sharing a house. And you know what? I've done this before lots and lots and lots of times. That's why I know it's cool and it works. You guys are shocked that I haven't put a hat on yet. I never go without my hat. But anyways, um, so, oh, there's a hair in this. Where did this hair come from? It's supposed to, I hope this isn't a nose hair. That's nasty. I have some friends in Humboldt. Humboldt County is a trippy place. You don't know you should come visit Humboldt County, California. We have some vegans up here that don't want to kill anything. That they wouldn't want to kill these ants. So, I mean, how am I going to just encourage these ants to go home? You know what I'm saying? I don't speak ant knees. So I'm just going to put, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to put some rubbing alcohol in the middle of this maple syrup pool. And we'll see what that does. I'm not going to put it on the little anties, but I'm definitely going to make it part of the mix here. I can already see this rubbing alcohol is not popular at all. The pace has picked up. People are fleeing the maple syrup puddle. This might be the answer. So let's just come back to this. So it's been, um, it's been about an hour and a half since the ants experienced the acid rain. That's what we're calling the rubbing alcohol that was poured on their food source. And you can see now that there's still some, like, reminiscing about maple syrup's past. The ghost of maple syrup past is still in the memories of these little ants, a couple of them. But, as you'll see in just a moment... Some of the ants have moved on and let go of the countertop maple syrup source. Let that go be part of the past. And they have moved forward with something far more convenient. 
And there it is, totally out of my walkway. The little, the pet ant food and water dish, you can kind of think of it that way, although it's a maple syrup puddle and a wet napkin. But that's all I got to do to, you know, how many pet ants do I have? Hundreds and hundreds, thousands? And look how easy they are to feed and take care of. And now that their food and water is right there next to where they're coming in, I don't have to worry about them being around my kitchen. There you go. Problem solved. So the wrap up is to live humanely with all kinds of creatures without putting poisons in your house. Just uh, keep them outside by caulking your house, the holes and stuff like that. Especially, you know, like holes that mice and rats can enter because so, you don't want to use rat poison at all because it kills hawks and other things. But you can keep the ants outside your house just by providing them food and water and shelter outside. Okay. You know, they come in because they need water, because they need to get away from drowning. And you can just mitigate that outside. And then you can be humane and not have poisons in your house and everything's good.